Welcome to Gurgram, India. I am at a 25K women's ITF tournament. Let's check it out. Where are we? Uh, we are at the W25. <laughs> we are at the W35K tournament in Gurugram. Let's go. Welcome to the Tipsy Tennis Podcast. I am in Guru Gram, India, speaking with the director of the Women's ITF 25K. Uh, Sharmada was telling me it's a 35K, but it's actually a 25K. Well, the prize money is $25,000, but the grading is W35, because that's the number of WTA points the winner gets. So ah, the see. prize money is $25,000, but the, the rating is uh, W35. Mm, nice. So I'm uh, here with Vishal, he's the director. So to start off, well, to start off, I like to, I usually like to ask my, uh, my guests, how did you get started playing tennis? Uh, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> it was back in school in sixth grade and uh, it was too hot to play cricket. So uh -huh. a couple of my friends, uh, we decided to give tennis a go uh -huh. uh, in the, you know, in the break period uh, during uh, school, school hours. Mm -hmm. So we started playing uh, and after the second day, uh, the school coach came to me and said, you know, I want to take you for a tennis tournament. I was mm -hmm. like, I've just mm -hmm. held a racket two days back. He says, no, you're a great athlete. You run hard and you got four days to practice. Mm -hmm. And he took me for one of the biggest uh, state uh, championships there were. And I got to the semifinals. Oh, wow. A, a kid who's never played tennis. <laughs> and uh, I was so obsessed with cricket that every time, you know, uh, one of the players would moon ball the ball and it was going way out of the baseline, I would actually drop my racket and catch it yeah. <laughs> because I was so obsessed with cricket. So, so that's how my tennis journey started. Oh, wow. and, um, and yeah, and after that, you know, I just uh, kept falling in love with the game and here we are. Did you, did you ever play like ITFs or professional? Yes, I played Davis Cup for India for six years. Oh, wow. Uh, I won an uh, Asian Games medal, which is a big thing in India, a big mm -hmm. deal in India to win a, a, in 2002. And I think that year, India won only 16 medals. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a big thing. Uh, and from the state of Delhi, uh, or, or th there were only two people who got a medal. Mm -hmm. I was one of the two. So uh, I did that. I was ranked, uh, I think in singles, I was ranked about 480 was my highest. In doubles, was about 250. Mm -hmm. But that was only after playing eight tournaments a year because we didn't have the money to travel and, and play more tournaments. Wow. And, uh, you know, as the rankings go, they take best 18 weeks out of a four. 52 week uh, mm -hmm. cycle and that was my ranking after eight tournaments and that's, that's all I could afford to play in I mean that's yeah. pretty good yeah yeah tennis is brutal in that in that sense where I mean you know it is expensive to play uh, but one thing because we, we hear it and I think now it's become like a much more popular conversation of like you know increase the money for the for the lower ranked players because like even if they win, how much do they win if they win the tournament here? Uh, they get a little under $4,000. The singles winner will get a little under $4,000. So like, you know, after expenses and stuff like that, they're like... They're pretty much breaking even. Yeah, even if you win the tournament, like best case scenario. And like... Y yes, yes. It's, it's tough in that sense, but also this might be maybe a little bit unpopular opinion where like to take, take for instance, you know, when somebody goes to college, they spend four years, they pay... X amount of money to go to college and then it's not even guaranteed, you know, their, how they make their career. I think like taking something similar for a similar idea to, for tennis, you know, people, these players are like making the conscious decision. They understand how tough it is. They understand, you know, the, the, the financials and all of this kind of stuff. And it's like an, an investment in it. And, you know, I think, uh, they shouldn't complain too much. Well, you know, actually, truth be told, uh, tennis or sport in general is way tougher than academics. Mm -hmm. Because see, a kid may go to college and he may invest and he's still very likely to find a job. Yeah. But a tennis player could invest the entire ten, life. 10 years, 12 years of their yeah. entire junior career, you know, preparing for the pros and you get to the pro level and you have one nasty injury and that is the end of your Done. career. So in that sense, playing professional sport is way tougher than academics. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I always say academics is way easier uh, as, a, as a pursuit also because, look, 2 plus 2 will always be 4 in mathematics. Mm -hmm. It will never change. When you're playing a sport like tennis, 
every ball you hit is a little different. Even there's, there's so many variables, there's so many different factors. So it makes it that much more challenging. Mm -hmm. You know, I could be having a great day on court, but my opponent could be having an even better day, day than me. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work out for me that day. And um, I could be having a very, really bad day, but my opponent's having a really <laughs> worse day than me. And it works out for me. So, you know, the, the unpredictability of sport is what makes it way tougher mm. than if you follow the conventional path of, you know, going, to, going through a college, academics, and then finding a job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can always study and go to college when you're 40 years of age. You, can't, pro you can't play professional sport then. Yeah. So you have a very limited time frame where you really need to either make it or not. Make it or break it. Yeah, make it or break it. If you want to say break it, but make it or not. Okay. You know, so then uh, what happens? Then you have to literally restart your career. Mm -hmm. You know, once you're, if you're 27 years of age and you know now tennis is done for you, now what? You know, so you got to restart. So mm -hmm. that way, uh, playing professional sport is a much uh, uh, tougher path to take, mm -hmm. but it's not meant for the faint hearted. And it's definitely meant for people uh, who want to follow their passion in life, you yeah. know, who, who really want to give it something, uh, you know, uh, who don't, if I may say, who don't want to take the safe route of going to college and, you know, academics and get a job and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it, it's, got a, it's got a definite allure to it and, and it's um, extremely uh, uh, satisfying for the soul, mm -hmm. you know, pursuing something you truly love and are passionate about, mm -hmm. that's really satisfying. Because Every professional time. tennis is not for everyone. No. But you can definitely use tennis as a way to get to college, to get to a good school, yep. get a good education. But once you're nearing graduation, you pretty much know whether you can go pro or not. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, tennis is a great vehicle for every youngster, every junior mm -hmm. to get themselves to a good college and then see where life takes them. If they're good enough to go pro, okay, go pro. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, now tennis has helped you get a really good education. Yeah, and, and then you can mon you know you can monetize that. And uh, for me, at least tennis, I would I would even uh, expand, I would expand it even more to like not only for it can take you to college, but like it could take you to so many different places. Like oh, yeah, the people absolutely. you can meet through tennis, and just the 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 lessons you learn through pursuing like a sport. You know the the discipline. Uh, the adaptability, being able to change, to, yeah. to adapt yeah. to changing environment all the time. Uh, if you're in a team sport working with other people, if you're in an individual sport, having the grit to, you know, deal with yeah. things on your yeah. own, yeah. problem solve in yeah. real time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I always say, uh, you know, books will teach you about things in life and sport or tennis will teach you about life itself, mm -hmm. how to deal with success failure, what's the value of discipline, determination, self-belief, mm -hmm. things like that. Books can't teach you that. No. You know, sport will. It's you like you, you, can read, you can read as many books as you can about the Sistine Chapel. Yeah. You'll never know what it smells like. Yep. Yep. What the, the echo, how it echoes yep. off the walls. Yep. yep. So, it's a, from like so I, for, from, a, from a human development uh, perspective, sport is one of the most essential things for every child to do. Mm -hmm. because. What it will teach you about life, no book can teach you. Mm -hmm. You know, it will it will help you become a more well-rounded human being. Now, you know, we've I'm sure we all of us have heard this saying that you know, sports develops character. Mm -hmm. You know, but I I would like to add something before that, which is sports reveals character, reveals. and then you can use it to either develop it further or make it worse. That choice is yours, right? So you've seen a lot of kids who've gone through tennis and they've just ba basically become nutcases, right? They've become nutcases. So they've gone the other way. And there are, there are kids who probably didn't believe in themselves as much but as human beings, but as they kept playing sport and along their journey, they just started believing in themselves more because that's what the sport taught them. Mm -hmm. So I think sport, can reveal your character mm -hmm. and then it's your choice whether you want to use it to develop it further uh, in, a, in a positive manner, in a good manner that helps you a lot or, you know, it just falls by the wayside. So speaking of uh, revealing your character, I'm curious as how, how many years, so it's two part. Firstly, like how, how many years have you been running uh, this tournament? 
so you know um, in 2019 i was appointed the captain of the indian billie jean king cup team which used to be called fed cup mm -hmm. and um, when i got on the team uh, you know i really started watching women's tennis closely uh, especially in india and i realized that there's so much potential in indian women's tennis which is extremely untapped and no one really cares about it so i made a conscious decision that look i'm going to try and do more and more women's events mm -hmm. so this is the fifth uh, itf world ranking event uh, that i'm hosting uh, mm -hmm. since uh, 2022 nice. uh, so yeah so i you know and it's not easy raising money for these tournaments in india there were a couple of itf uh, 15 k's in which i had to put money from my own pocket because we couldn't raise sponsorship uh, but i but i've been determined since uh, you know what four years or so uh, uh, to really support women's tennis in India. So, so this is the fifth tournament that we're doing for women. We've mm -hmm. done one for men, uh, which was a $15,000 event. And um, two weeks, uh, one week after this tournament, we have an ITF Junior World Ranking event, which will be our fifth ITF Junior World Ranking event that we'll mm -hmm. be doing. So yeah, so the tennis project is definitely one of, uh, uh, one of the venues which is really looking to promote tennis in India in a holistic manner, mm -hmm. not just about coaching, but also giving opportunities to our players through competition, you know, because uh, you train to play competitions and if you don't have the opportunity to play competition, training becomes pointless, right? So, yeah. so that's what we're aiming to do here. Uh, it, it's a lot of hard work. It's, uh, it's an uphill task, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, seeing the response that I've got for this week, I'm very enthused uh, that going forward, uh, we'll get more and more support from uh, corporate India and uh, and hopefully we'll be able to do a lot more tournaments. How, how did you, how do you get, how, let's say, you know, how do you get started, started how do you get started making like a ITF event like this? Oh, okay, so, so uh, you know, I'm sure every country has their own procedures, but in India, um, Firstly, I have to have the intent and the desire to do something because I've got to raise all the money. Mm -hmm. So once I want to do an event, um, because we're situated in the state of Haryana uh, in, uh, in India, so I have to apply to the Haryana Tennis Association, which in turn applies to the All India Tennis Association, which in turn applies to the International Tennis Federation for the sanctioning mm -hmm. that we would like to do this event. And then the sanction process comes through and then you are allotted the tournament um, and then the and then your job as the tournament host or for me as tournament director is to make sure I raise all the funding for the tournament, for the expenses, mm -hmm. um, you know, my facility is in good shape. It meets all the um, uh, parameters laid down by the International Tennis Federation of hosting an event. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the quality of the courts, the, the size of the court has to be according to what the ITF wants. Um, uh, and basically set everything up, you know, set up the hotel for the players so that they have convenience, give them transportation, uh, make sure they're, the balls are good on court, there's enough water, you know, all the, uh, all the nitty gritty that goes into, you know, uh, preparing for a tournament. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the other part is the referee and the umpires, you know, so I got to take care of them also, you know, they obviously have a fee and we pay the fee and their travel and accommodation is looked after by us uh, but the technical running of the tournament which is making the draws uh, and anything on court mm -hmm. uh, that comes under the purview of the ITF referee mm -hmm. so the ITF referee becomes the technical boss uh, of the tournament whereas mm -hmm. as tournament director I'm the overall boss of the so they bring over uh, an ITF referee yes from so every so there's one right here right now, yes right? so every uh, tournament has to have an ITF referee and they have to have uh, uh, four ITF certified umpires and two local umpires are allowed uh, and um, and yeah so you have to uh, you know make sure that there is all this logistical stuff in place mm -hmm. and once uh, the ITF supervisor or the ITF referee comes in and then then it's their show in terms of making the draws and uh, you know, making the schedules and anything on court, mm. whether it's a line call or a questionable call or a judgment ruling, the ITF referee does that. I have no role to play in it. So you would say you, you handle mostly like the logistics of how the tournament is going to be hosted and ran. Yes. And then they and then the ITF referee comes in and does the ITF like the more tennis oriented. Yes, the, the the technical stuff like making the draw, making yeah. the draws. 
uh, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's up to the ITF referee. I have no say in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can at best decide the wild cards for the tournament. And if I want certain matches to be put on the show court, I can tell the ITF referee that I'd like this match played on this court. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you'll see this week, all the Indians are playing on court number one mm -hmm. because we want the Indian interest to be there. Uh, so yeah, so that is my stuff. And then other than that, this week, uh, you know, we've, we've held a pro-am event uh, for the first time in India. Oh, yeah which has never happened. Uh, so we did a pro-am event on Saturday. Then Sunday night, uh, uh, I decided to host uh, a player's party. Yeah, I, know, I and, saw the flyers. And we made it a karaoke night. Uh -huh. So the players were singing because I just wanted to make it fun and different for the players, you know. So, uh, so yeah, so you know, it's, it's my job to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, last year for the same tournament, uh, because the players gave such a incredible feedback to the ITF, about the way we hosted it, uh, the ITF sent me an, uh, a recognition award for being the best tournament hosted in India. Yeah, so that was quite uh, good. So this year, you know, we've I've tried my heart and soul to make it an even better tournament, uh, mm -hmm. and I hope the players have loved it and appreciated it. That's that's really cool to see how how it all works, and, and congrats for, Thank for you. doing it. I think uh, t tennis needs more people who put their their heart and soul into yep, it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and not not also like expecting anything in return. Yeah, more, yeah. You know, you, you know, you know. The thing is, I'm I'm a tennis player at heart. Yeah. Uh, more than anything else, you know, and and what drives me uh, to doing all this stuff and taking all these risks of raising all this money and capital is the fact that when I was growing up, like I said, I got to play eight at best ten tournaments in a year. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want this generation and the generations coming ahead to face the same challenges we did. You know, like, I mean, in hindsight, I can only say how good I could have been. Yeah. Nobody's going to find out, including me, because we didn't have that opportunity. Yeah. We didn't have the money to travel abroad. So, so for me, uh, what drives me is the fact that I want to give more and more Indian players an opportunity to compete at an international level. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to their hard work. You know, they, they will not have the regret that we didn't have opportunities. Mm -hmm. So that's what really drives me to, you know, go out there and, and try and put these tournaments together and, you know, host them. That's really awesome. Uh, when, uh, when you mentioned that you were playing for a Davis Cup team, mm -hmm. how, how many years? You said six? Yeah, from 2000 to 2006, I was a part of the team. Was, yeah. uh, was what, Leander Pays? Was he yeah, so on? I made my de debut uh, against uh, South Korea in New Delhi. And, uh, and Leander and I played doubles in that uh, match, oh. uh, in that tie. How was that? And, oh, it was a great, it was a match I'll never forget in my life, even 24 years Later, you ask me anything about that match, and I remember because that was a match. That that was the match of my life. I played the best tennis I've probably ever played. Yeah. And also in a very pressure cooker match because we were playing a very strong Korean team. Um, Korea had Hyung Tae Lee and Yung Yong Il, both were top 100 players. Uh, I think Yung Yong Il was 104, and Hyung Tae Lee was about 90. And next year, Hyung Tae Lee became top 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was a must-win match for us because we knew Leander would on grass win both his singles and we knew our number two player would lose both his singles <laughs> so the doubles match became very crucial uh, so for me to play that match and not only play that match uh, be the best player on that court on that particular day oh you were yeah so you know the <laughs> korean co the, the korean captain at the end of the tie actually said that you threw in this guy and that's why you won otherwise <laughs> we were sure we were going to win doubles uh -huh. and uh, and uh, and you know, I mean, it's been my dream as I was a kid to play for India. That's mm -hmm. all I've always wanted to do. Play for India, uh, do good from it for India because I come from an army background. My grandfather was an army man. So I've, I've, uh, I've been brought up with a lot of, uh, you know, nationalistic pride. Like, uh, you know, I want to see uh, India succeed as a country and do well. And uh, so for me to play for India was the biggest dream. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't dream of winning Wimbledon. I dreamt of playing for India and winning for India. Mm -hmm. And when I achieved that, you know, that was a big, yes, I've done it kind of a thing for me, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And then, of course, then, you know, in 2002, when I won a Nation Games medal, that was huge. Uh, so, yeah, the experience of playing alongside Leander was fabulous. He was world number one at that time. Mm -hmm. And I was world number 700 and something, yeah. <laughs> you know. But for us to combine and beat a team that was top 100 almost, yeah. I mean, that was, that was pretty big. Wow. Yeah, we That's beat them. Sick. We beat them 6-7, 6-4, 6-4, 7-6.
three out of five sets. Yeah, three out of full full sets. Wow. There was no super tiebreaker, full sets. Yeah. So yeah. That that's sick. And so, uh, did you ever play the Olympics? No, I never got to the Olympics. No. No. Yeah. It was like the certain, I guess, like ranking was. Yes, because yeah, your ranking had to be a lot higher. And then plus, Leander and Mahesh were the number one doubles pairing in uh, in India. So they get the Rightly so, because you know they'd won so many Grand Slams together and stuff. So yeah, they were always the people ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then, uh, I think a, a good segue is uh, from Davis Cup over to uh, Fed Cup, or what is it called now? Bill- Billie Jean King Cup, yeah. Billie Jean, Billie Jean King Cup. Uh, you were the captain of it from... Yeah, so from 2019 year. till 2022, mm-hmm. uh, I was the captain of the team. Uh, but before that, you know, I retired p- playing tennis in 2007, early 2007. And then in 2010, I was appointed uh, Junior Davis Cup captain for India. Mm-hmm. And I was the captain for six years, and out of which we went to the world group, the elite world group, which is 16 teams all over the world. We went there uh, three times. So that was a pretty nice. pretty good thing for, for me. And then in 2019, I was given the responsibility of, uh, of the Billie Jean King Cup. And uh, in our 42-year history, uh, we had always either been in Asia Oceana Group 1 or Asia Oceana Group 2 uh, and we'd never progressed to the World Group playoff stage mm-hmm. and then in 2020 uh, under my captaincy we finally did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was a very big uh, you know, moment uh, not just for me personally but also for the Indian women's tennis movement as I call it uh, because I think that gave uh, a lot of the youngsters you see today belief and you know that hunger that hey we want to do this again you know we've achieved it once and we want to do it again so i was a part of the team for a good part of uh, three and a half four years and Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah i mean um, i learned a lot from the girls uh, and uh, uh, and yeah and i became a big fan of uh, women's tennis in india was that was mirza playing on the team at that time yes she was she played doubles uh, and um, uh, the the year we qualified uh, in 2020 in dubai she was a part of she played doubles in that tie and so as as captain i'm you know obviously it's a women's event and i'm the non playing captain but it's my responsibility and duty to make sure uh, uh, that the players are ready to compete uh, who plays number 1 singles who plays number 2 singles who plays doubles mm-hmm. those are all calls i have to take and um, uh, and you know uh, uh, Thankfully, the calls I made uh, worked well in our favor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we achieved something that we've never achieved. I have, in my entire trophy cabinet, I have one uh, pink medal, <laughs> which is from that Billie Jean King Cup tie in, uh, in Dubai in 2020, and I cherish mm-hmm. that very much. What, what's one of the toughest decisions you had to make as captain? You know, as a captain, one of the, the toughest decisions always is to make is to who to play, because, you know, all the players want to play. Yeah. But it's your job to... Uh, try and do the best for the team the way you look at it the way you see it I mean if you see a player they might be higher in the rankings but maybe they're not sharp enough uh, just to make them sit out for a tie you know so you got to take these tough calls but at the end of the day uh, you have to make them without any bias you have to make them very dispassionately because your interest has to be the team not the individual so for example you know uh, Sanya was very keen to play doubles with Rutuja uh, in that particular uh, qualification event mm-hmm. and at that time Ankita was playing much better tennis than Rutuja and I told Sanya that look we need to you need to play with Ankita because she will give you the stability that you need and then you can take over mm-hmm. and uh, you know what we played uh, three deciding doubles matches and we won all three hey. so you know That's... when your decision goes right you know uh, there's not much anybody can say. So, so you got to take these tough calls. You got to, and at the end of the day, you've got to make sure the team uh, is well looked after. Uh, you know, uh, everything is provided for the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got to uh, make sure the National Tennis Federation is uh, giving or providing uh, enough funding for the team to do what they need to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so you have to do a lot of this stuff. And uh, and at the end of the day, you have to sit on the court with the players, and you're the only one who can give them any advice uh, on what to do. Uh, in anything tactical or something, you're, it's basically uh, on you. So, so yeah, it was a great challenge. I loved every minute of it, and uh, yeah, let's see what happens in the future. What's the process like when it when deciding who is going to be on the team? Do you base it mostly on ranking? So basically, that is decided by the selection committee of the All India Tennis Association. They sit down and they decide, and they invite the captain into that meeting 
you know just to give his or her uh, viewpoint on uh, on who who they would like in the team and mm -hmm. uh, and yeah so you give your viewpoint and then the selection committee decides uh, who gets selected they don't have like a like a playoffs kind of like to, no, for the spots? N no, you don't have a playoff for the spots. They look at world rankings. They look at, you know, who's playing good tennis at that time. If anybody's coming off an injury and maybe rusty. and So mm -hmm. they, t they take a look at a few parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of going back, I, I, I missed this question because you started talking about some more interesting stuff. <laughs> uh, but going back to when you, we were saying, talking about uh, how sport and tennis reveals character, what's, uh, what's one of like, the more crazier things they've seen happen on court from from some of the players? Oh, I mean, you come across all sorts of players, you know, right through your playing career also. We had guys, uh, you know, who were absolute gentlemen, very nice guys, and we made good friends with them, and uh, and we continue to remain friends. And there were guys who were absolute nut jobs, very disrespectful, very rude, and you don't really care much about them. So you, we've seen all sorts of, you know, uh, crazy people out there on the court. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, abusive. You know, not nice, just nasty. And then there are people who, you know, you uh, build a develop a great camaraderie with it. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, uh, I mean, when you say that, it's not just on the court. Even when you travel, you know, you meet so many interesting people. So we went to play uh, Australia in Adelaide. Uh, in 2002, and um, if you, if anybody follows uh, Australian sport, they have a cheerleading squad called the Fanatics. So you'll all mm -hmm. see them in the Aussie gold uh, t-shirts, and they're all cheering together. And we were playing a very strong Australian team. Leighton Hewitt was world number one. Aussies, I w sorry to yeah. cut you off. Aussies, I feel like they're like notorious for being like the rowdiest, yeah, yeah, craziest yeah, yeah. fans. So, so, so we were playing Leighton Hewitt, who, who was world number one, had just won US Open, uh -huh. and Todd Woodbridge was also world number one in doubles and had just won uh, US Open doubles. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other team, Wayne Arthurs, uh, was top 40 in the world. So they had a very strong team, yeah. and, and we had a very slim chance against them. But we put up a great fight. You know, we, we fought hard, we lost close matches. So in that sense, the experience was good. So on the last day, we'd lost a tie 3-0. Three, three and on the last day, uh, you know, uh, the fanatics were there and there was one guy, Darren Smith, who used to play the trumpet for them, mm -hmm. who was like the chair who got them going. And these guys had been taking the piss out of us the whole week, you know, they had been added with us. So I decided to walk up into the stands in my entire Indian jersey. <laughs> and I went right, stood right next to Darren Smith and I said, now you're going to do a cheer for India. And yeah. they couldn't believe it that somebody had the guts to walk up to <laughs> us, sit in the middle of us wearing the Indian uniform yeah. and saying, you do, and they did a chair for us. Oh, really? Yeah, it was amazing. And then, uh, you know, and, uh, and then they did a chair for me because they couldn't believe it. <laughs> it, was, it was that crazy, right? And in the evening, then they, they threw a party for us. We, we went to that party, we hung out with these guys. Mm -hmm. And um, I think eight years later, I was, one of, I was his best man at his wedding. Oh really? Yeah, and oh, wow. till today we continue to be uh, brothers, uh -huh. and uh, we call each other brothers from different mothers. And well, uh, different yeah, different so you know, tennis takes you to different places in the world. You meet some incredible people. Yeah. Uh, you make uh, friendships for life. Uh, you become brothers, and um, and you come across some real jackasses who you don't care about. So that's the way it goes. Yeah. The the only reason I'm here right today. Uh, kind of in general is uh, I met Sharmada at a wedding. I came to India a few years ago mm -hmm. in 2019. Uh, do you know Rishika? Sunkara, yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, so I, I went to her wedding. Oh, nice. Uh, she was working, she was teaching tennis in New York with my brother. Oh, yeah? Uh, Whereabouts in, in New York? Uh, in um, McCarran Park in Brooklyn. Okay, because I spent yeah. 19 summers in New York. Because uh, my coach was in West Hampton, I used to go there uh, so every summer. The yeah, so yeah. this is in, in the city. Yeah. Uh, so Rishika, my brother, were working together, and she was there for me in the U.S. for only I think like two years, mm -hmm. and then she's like, "Okay, I'm going back to India, getting married." And then my brother's like, "Can we? Can I come?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, sure." And we actually went, and she didn't think my brother was being serious. She thought that he was joking <laughs> around, and so he came to India, and so because she's a tennis player, it was a whole tennis crew, I met uh, Saujanya, yeah, yeah. I met Sharmada, um, uh, a few others, um, 
and then I kept in contact with them. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out uh, I thought it was going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to come to go to an Indian wedding. Mm -hmm. That was a South, South yeah, Indian you, wedding. You don't want to miss that. Next time, try and get to an North Indian one. <laughs> That's that, even crazier. So get get yeah. this. Turns out. I'm back in India for another wedding. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and this one is in the north in Amritsar. Oh, good. So that's going to be crazy uh, to a different level. Yeah. And so um, uh, I, was in, uh, I was in Australia in, in January for the Australian Open, shooting some stuff. Um, I did a couple, couple interviews, tennis content, blah, blah, blah. And then I had the wedding in uh, March. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, next week in a few days. And I was like... Uh, I can go to Australia and then come back and then go back to India and then come back or I could just stay in Asia yeah. during that time. And so I ended up staying in Asia. I went to Philippines. I was in Thailand. Nice. Um, and then I came to India a few days. My brother mm -hmm. arrives in a couple days. I came here a few days early to see Sharmada. I did an interview with her yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, check, out the, check out the tournament venue. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to have met you. Tomorrow I'm going to uh, the Challenger uh -huh. event nice. in, in, in New Delhi. New Delhi. Yeah. And tennis is precisely, you know, tennis is, is you know, granted, I have a part, part, like the trip was like partly for like uh, f uh, for my podcast and mm -hmm. to grow it, but it turned into so much more, mm -hmm. uh, especially while I was in the Philippines. I had a, the reason I went there is because I had a friend one of my friends, she's uh, who lives in New York. She's from there. She's like, oh, I'm gonna be visiting family for you know. I told her I'm gonna be in Asia. She's like, oh, I'm gonna be visiting family. I'm like, all right, I'm going to Philippines. And then she connected me with her tennis friend. And then from there, I was playing. I played tennis a couple times in uh, in Manila. And then I was taking a bus to go to. Well, it was a one hour flight to go to Palawan, which mm -hmm. is another island. But instead, I was like, let me take a bus, a ferry, a bus, another ferry, another ferry, and then a bus yep. to get to where I need to go because I was going to meet my friend there. Uh, and it, and uh, on one of the islands, I arrived on Wednesday to the port because I read online it's uh, every single day. Uh, there's like once a day, uh, there's a ferry. Turns out it wasn't leaving until Saturday. <laughs> so I'm like, shit, what am I going to like, what am I going to do? So, uh, we're, so we went, we went up, we took the bus, like another, like two, it was five hours from the previous place. We went up two hours to like another small town. We're just walking around and I find tennis courts. I'm like, yep. oh, yes. Tennis courts. And uh, there were a bunch of uh, kids over there as well. And, uh, I'm like I'm talking to them through the fence. I'm like, you guys want to play tennis? They're like, yeah, 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 let's play tennis. And so I'm hitting a few shots, and every time I would hit the ball, I or like hit between my legs or something like that, they went crazy. It was like, um, it was some it was random tennis courts in the middle of the Philippines that just I, I was able to like you know ma make their day, and I met some of the other yeah. people, and uh, that thing it actually really uh, inspired me to similar to how you are trying to push tennis India. Indian tennis, uh, and and give people give players the opportunity opportunities that you didn't have growing up. Uh, you know, I I wanted to do. I always had like in back of my mind, like you know, that's something I wanted to do as well mm -hmm. because tennis has given me so much that like I feel like I just wouldn't be doing right if I didn't give yep. the same thing to other people. And that particular experience was like. I think that's the door opening. It's like yep. this is a very direct way where I could I could figure out ways to, to get yeah, back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think uh, on that note, I think uh, we can we can wrap it up. Yep. I think uh, really cool to hear about uh, your experience. I didn't I didn't expect it to be honest. No, you know, no, <laughs> <laughs> no offense. I'm like no, that's fine. Sharma, she's like, oh yeah, yeah she he's captain davis cup i'm like oh and then you're telling me you played for our fed cup and then you're like oh i played for davis cup i'm like what where did this come from yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, i think what you're doing uh is very inspiring thank you i think and the fact you know you have the the national pride the way you were telling me that your your davis cup experience was like you know yeah like like it really it, it felt very very fulfilling yeah but then on top of that you you pushed men's tennis you pushed women's tennis and you're pushing junior tennis on, yeah. the, on the national scale, which is really not, is not a small feat. It is 
is huge. And uh, I think I, I was speaking to one of the other uh, coaches here. Uh, she's uh, from Thailand. Mm -hmm. And she was mentioning like back in the day when she was growing up, they had, I, I forgot the guy's name, but they had a couple like good players. And then now Thailand doesn't really have anybody. Paron Tri Japan and Danai Udumchok. Yeah, and now they don't have like the same caliber. Yeah. And there's a lack of, I think, inspiration, you know, role model, yeah. motivation. Yeah. And, and I think you, you, you play a, a very pivotal role in that for, for Indian tennis. And I, I hope you can continue to Thank grow you. the tournament, grow uh, your tennis influence, bring more, pl more players into the sport and push more players, you know, to, to great heights. Uh, I don't think there's any shortage of talent in India. I don't know why India is, if they do one thing right, they know how to make doubles players. <laughs> I, yeah, I because we, we need to find better athletes for singles. Uh, you need to be a yes, much better athlete for singles, yeah. Sim similarly, at least in New York, every time I was playing against like an Indian player, they always had like the softest hands. They yeah. have unbelievable touch. Yeah. And maybe that's also part of the, yeah. Yeah. the doubles yeah. magic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, thank you so much for Appreciate it. taking the time. Yep. If you don't mind, we're going to say uh, stay tipsy. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Stay, Stay tipsy. tipsy. <laughs> All right. That was good. Awesome. Thanks, mate. All right. I guess I got to do some duties. Yeah. And if, if, if you have to go, you can take care of it. And yeah. I can like uh, edit, cut some things out. So if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Sharmad, I told me you're the, the captain for the Fed Cup team as well. I was for three years. You were? Yeah. Last year I was. Uh, five. You're five. Yeah, because the team got to the World Group playoffs for the first time in our history. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, cool. So uh, let's just start. Uh,